Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to part 21 of our API testing with REST Assured on Cucumber course. And in this video, we are going to be talking about contract API testing with builder patterns. And again guys, this video is not completely related to our previous videos that we have discussed. You can also watch this video in isolation even if you have not watched the previous videos. But watching the previous videos is going to give you more confidence of the code that we have discussed. But in this video, we are going to talk about a separate concept which is how you can maintain your POJO classes of our API and also how you maintain the contracts of the POJO classes that we have built all these days in our previous videos using builder patterns. So this is going to be a completely new topic that we're talking about and we have fused that within our own API testing with the rest assured course just to ensure that we don't miss this particular concept in our course. All right, so let's get started. So before talking about the builder pattern itself, we are going to talk about the contract testing. And I have discussed about contract testing a lot in our EA Weekly video series of YouTube. So you can go and watch that particular video where I have discussed about contract testing. And again, contract testing is immediately applicable anywhere where you have two services that need to communicate such as an API client and a web front end. Although a single service is a common use case, contract testing really shines in an environment with many services. So this is something very, very important for our case as well. Because as we know in our previous videos, we discussed about the fake JSON server which generates the JSON and we try to deserialize that and serialize those JSON files into a class file and from class file to JSON file and all those things we did. But all these days we just had an assumption that the API server that we have is always going to return as only this particular format of the JSON response. But what if something changes in the server side and our test will start to fail automatically because we don't really have any contract with the JSON server which is nothing but the fake JSON server in our case with the code that we are writing. So we need to make a contract between a fake JSON server and with our test code so that our test will always works without any problem and if anything fails then probably we'll know that which particular property of our web server has changed and why our test is failing in this particular area. So these are something that is very very important that we could probably understand while doing with the contract testing. So there are many different tools available in the market for doing contract testing and one of the popular contract testing tool is PACT. And once again guys I have discussed about PACT and how to use PACT.net in the EA weekly videos so you can go ahead and watch there. And again I'm not going to be talking about the contract testing in this place because the whole topic is around builder patterns. So that's what we'll be discussing. But just to make you understand that there is a concept of contract testing. That's why I'm introducing you, you this in here. But builder pattern is what we are going to be focusing on and how we're going to achieve contract testing with the builder patterns. So the builder is a design pattern designed to provide a flexible solution to various object creation problems in object oriented programming. The builder pattern allows the creation of different representations of an object using the same construction code. That is very very important and we'll talk about that in a minute in our next slide. But as you can see the builder design patterns solves the problems like how can a class creates different representations of a complex object and how can a class that includes creating a complex object be simplified. So if you don't really understand what these theories are talking about, I'll quickly show you a code example so that you can understand what it is. So as you can see, we have a POJO class. Again, POJO is nothing but a plain old Java object class of the POST. Again, this particular class we have already discussed in our previous videos of this course. So please go ahead and watch there if you have not watched that. As you can see in here, we have this particular POST class which has a properties like private properties and it has a constructor called POST and it has a getter and of course it has a setter and if you could see here there are just three properties available private properties and only three getters available and there will be three setter methods available and as you can see there is only one construction but you can still see there are a lot of permutations and combination of constructors can be created something like a default constructor and a constructor with just one parameter and a constructor with two parameters and the constructor with three parameters as you are seeing in here. 
And similarly, there are constructors that you can mix and match the permutations and combinations, something like a constructor just with ID, and a constructor with ID and author, and a constructor with an ID and title, and then a constructor with title and author and th things of that nature. So you can see that for a particular given type, in this case post, we can have a different kinds of telescopic constructors. And these telescopic constructors can be complex and even more vague if our object is getting very, very complex. And in order to resolve these kinds of situations, builder pattern comes in the picture. So as you can see, this is a static class called builder class. And again, you can name it anything, but builder is a standard way of calling it. And you can see here it tries to simplify the way we create the constructors. So you can see I'm still calling the posts class which we saw in our previous slide and I'm passing in all the properties which is required within a constructor for this particular builder class and in here I'm setting all the values something like this which is pretty cool. So whichever property that you need to be setting it you only call that particular set operation so that these values will be set for it automatically. And you don't really have to worry about how these particular values have been set because you're going to be calling only that particular properties method to just set that particular value. And the getter is going to be sitting within the posts class, not within the builder class, which is going to oversimplify the way that we are creating a constructor in here. And you can see that there is only one constructors being called, which is something about the posts class three parameter space constructor and this reduce our code dramatically. So how to call this particular builder class basically? It's going to be something like this. As you can see, I'm just going to call the posts.builder.build. That's it. And I can create a type of post and then I can get the value out from it. But if you want to set any value, then you're going to do posts.builder. Set ID or set title and set author and then you can do that as well which is going to be very, very easy in the builder pattern side. So essentially, builder patterns get rid of the problems with the complex object, which has telescopic constructor in much easier way. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my IntelliJ IDE. And again, for this particular video, I'm going to be using the source code, which is available below here. All right, so now in my IntelliJ IDE, and you can see that this is the same project that we have already discussed in all our videos in our earlier videos. And what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to be working with the builder pattern based class. So I'm just going to convert only this particular class, which is nothing but the post class, and I'm going to convert that to the builder pattern in here. So what I'm going to do, if you remember in our earlier videos, we created this post class with two constructors, something like this. And we also had a problem that without having the default constructor, the code was throwing us an error while we're trying to execute this. But now in order to resolve all these problems, that's where we are going to be calling our builder patterns basically. So I'm going to get rid of these setter, at least from in here, which I don't really require this. And you can see it's gone. And I'm going to be calling a public static class of builder and within this builder I'm going to set the same three properties that we created in our earlier videos over here and then I'm going to create default constructors which is going to be public builder and then I need all the setter basically so I'm going to generate once again just get all the setters over here, which is pretty awesome. But the change in here for the setter is, instead of returning it to the void, I'm going to return it as a builder. That's the creational design pattern basically does. You're going to return all the builder type over here for each and every set operation that you're going to be doing. Oops, I just said return this, not the builder. Not like I'm going to say new this. And then I'm going to return uh this and this way this is going to be builder as well and this is going to be builder and i'm going to be returning this over here so you can see with the builder patterns 
I could able to create a set operation with returning all of the this type, which is nothing but the builder type. And this way I can also ensure that I have an isolated object for each and every properties that I'm actually working with. And finally, I'm going to be calling our posts as a written type for the build method. And I'm going to return the new of posts where I'm going to pass the ID, title and author. So this is the builder pattern guys. This is what I'm talking about. So this way what will happen eventually is we'll reduce so much of course that we are writing all these days. And now how to call this particular uh, builder pattern or code. So for that, I'm going to go to my get post dot feature. And if I go all the way to the, uh, I think this one, then I should see the author name as over here. This is where I have actually called the posts of this one. So I'm just going to comment this particular piece of code. Maybe, you know, I don't really have to comment this particular piece of code. So this code is without builder pattern right and this time I'm gonna call with builder pattern which is gonna be var of posts is equal to new of posts dot I'm gonna call the builder constructor in here and then I'm gonna just call the build so basically you can also do the set author set ID and title over here because I don't really have to set any value at least at this particular point I'm just gonna call the build method over here and finally I'm gonna do the post operation so the post operation is gonna be pretty much like how I did in here so maybe I can just call this something like this All right. so this can be a var type and instead of the posts dot class, I'm just going to do the posts dot get class so that I can make this as a class. And now I can just call the post dot get author, which is this one. And because this particular post actually has all the getter operation like get author title and ID, I can easily call the author over here. That's it. So this way it reduces dramatically a lot of way that we can reduce the constructor. But now you may have a question like what difference that this particular code has made. Eventually this has even increased the number of lines of code here than compared to before. And again, guys, don't think of this particular situation over here that this particular uh, code is actually very, very simple. It has only three properties, but in real time situation with any of the other classes, you would see there will be a lot of different properties and you need to have a different permutations and combinations of constructor. But in here, we're not even worried about all those constructor. We just call in here and it just works without any problem. So as that said, I'm just gonna run this particular piece of code and I'm gonna see what's gonna basically happen. So if I just r run this particular selector scenarios, so let's see what's gonna happen. There we go. The test has got failed. So let's quickly see what has gone wrong. Oops, it's because of this token because we have removed the token in our earlier videos to be a static token. So I'm just gonna include that over here. So that's the problem. I'm just gonna run this again. And you can see that the code has successfully completed execution and the test has got passed. So this way we can see that we could able to use the builder pattern to perform the operation and it increases so much of our coding practices much, much better. And now you have a question like this particular piece of code has introduced or the builder pattern has really introduced so many different lines of code than before. So how to reduce this particular uh, lines of code and how we can make our code even more neater than before, even though without builder patterns, we can at least see the getter and setter. But with builder pattern, we also see a static class, which is something increasing some more lines of code in here. So we should have some way to reduce this particular lines of code. So how to get rid of all this particular problem? We are going to be talking about Lambok plugin in our next video to see how we can reduce the number of lines of code. Thank you.